What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Wes Gardner, Kami De Hobo himself. And we have a very special video series for you, one that I've been wanting to do for years and has been requested for years. My top 25 games of all time out of all the video games in the world. What are my top 25 favorites in order? And yeah, we're doing a full on video series. It's going to be five videos worth. Whew, let's get this going. Uh, so it's going to be broken up and we're going to do five games per episode. And of course, that means we're going to end with the top five games of all time, according to your boy right here. But without further ado, let's get started with part one of the top 25 games of all time. At number 25 is Heroes of Might and Magic 3. It's a game that came out in 1999. So yeah, we're we're talking some retro stuff now. <laughs> 1999 and is maybe the most addictive game I've ever played in my life. So it takes the turn-based strategy, kind of the little grid setup that you might even be familiar with with things like Fire Emblem. Everything feeds back into itself on this. So you can go discover little places on a map, you know, get gold for finding it, you know, behind a cavern. Uh, then as you start leveling up your party members, or your squad members, I should say, you start giving them choices too. So do you want them to have more XP? Or do you want them to be able to find more gold? And how will that help, you know, uh, your, your home? And how will that lead to more output as far as more units and getting a bigger uh, unit to follow you around for battles and get more uh, strong allies or... Are you going to get more tech tree stuff? Are you going to actually use ballistas and, you know, ram into walls and things like that? And so there's a lot of choices that you make every single click. And this is a master class of that one more click, one more turn. Let me just go. Let me just do these two more things. Just a little bit of this. And then, you know, I'm going to move on to something else. And here's a pro tip. You never move on. You keep going forever. <laughs> I know one of my save games was uh, right about the 90 hour mark. And that was way back when on my old gateway computer. I wish I still had that save file, but no matter what way you play Heroes of Might Magic 3, play it. Please, you owe it to yourself. It plays on everything nowadays. Uh, so go to good old games, go to Steam, wherever you may find it. I think it's a, there's a tablet version too. Who knows, but super good. Oh, it's super good. I kind of want to go play it right now. So for our number 24 game, and here's the deal, the only Zelda game on our list. Ooh, say what? At 24? Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So not Ocarina, not Link to the Past, not Breath of the Wild, not Majora's Mask. We're talking Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. Came out in 1993. Um, I remember playing it on the original Game Boy with that green tint. And then they actually came out with a Game Boy Color version called Link's Awakening DX which is also on the uh, 3DS uh, in Virtual Shop, I think. I don't know if it's on the Wii U. I think it's only on the 3DS. But no matter how you need to play it, you need to play it. It's surreal. It It's like the Twin Peaks of Zelda games. <laughs> you, you know, there's like telephones that you answer and everyone is kind of breaking the fourth wall. That you, you talk to these little kids and they're playing catch and one of them's like, Hey man, I heard there's a place up north, uh, but I don't know what that means because I'm just a kid in a video game. And you're like, what? It, very surreal. Um, but the gameplay is on point if you like Link to the Past and the old school Zelda games. Uh, the map exploration, the problem solving skills. I mean, everything that you love about Zelda is condensed in this game. But it has a very surreal package around it. Just very fun. There's no other game in the series like it, and I guess that's why it's my favorite. So at number 23, yet another game that came out in 1999. I'm sensing a trend here. <laughs> um, and I don't think it's the last game that came out in 99 either. Hmm. But Quake 3 Arena, oh my goodness. I love this game so much. This was actually the first episode of Power Hour I ever did. Because uh, I wanted to start off with one of my favorites, and that series went on, and, you know, super good series, and, you know, pro tip, it's making a comeback. Just letting you know. But, Quake 3 Arena, what is there to say about it? I mean, it it and Unreal Tournament 99 were the two kind of pinnacles of that deathmatch, 
twitchy shooter, uh, arena based, you know, capture the flag or deathmatch. If you have that vibe, you're going to get it out of Quake 3. It's awesome. You have your, your awesome laser, uh, your railgun that just one shot, one kill. So you have railgun only maps. Think of it like a Smash Final Destination, no items type thing. You just have a one and done. You're good to go. Uh, that shows how hardcore you really are. But those the levels are great. The performance is amazing. I know Quake Live is kind of taking Quake 3 Arena and Team Arena and making it accessible for everybody. So if you want to get into Quake and want to dabble a little bit, uh, yeah, go do it that way. But man, Quake 3, oh, I've put so many hours into that. Enough so even that I started my little dip in the toes in for game development. It was really level editing. You would get the Quake 3 level editor and you would actually build the brushes. You would do brush based uh, building. So the little elevators and uh, flipping triggers and kind of learning game logic. That's where I got my start doing that stuff was in Quake 3 building custom maps and texturing and making sure everything's divisible by 16 and 256 and oh, so much fun. Uh, listening to Aerosmith and making Quake levels. Ton of fun. Single tier. But yeah, <laughs> 23 is Quake 3 Arena. Go play it. It's awesome. Next game on the list from 1998, released on the PlayStation 1, is Tenchu Cell Assassins. I recently did a West vs. Backlog Retro episode on this. It is genuinely one of my favorite games ever made. It's the best ninja game ever made. I know there's Mark of the Ninja. I know there's that ninja game on PS1 called Ninja. Uh, but this, in my opinion, is the best. It's it's very deliberate. It does have a learning curve. But once you get good, and once you can kind of see how the enemies move, and what are their you know what are their paths, and what roofs can I get on, and what vantage point do I have, uh, you you mix that with dynamic kills, um, stealth kills. Um, you can even do like limb dismemberment, which is wild. So much to love about that game. There's always something new to find out. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see the real deep dive of it, I think I played the game for about an hour and 20 minutes on the West vs. Backlog Retro episode, which I will link in the description to this video. Tons of fun. Man, I love Tenchu. Ooh, it's so good. So, there was only room for one massive, big, open RPG. Open world RPG. And I was kind of juggling three or four in my mind. But the one that ended up winning and actually making it onto the list was the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. There's something to discover even today. The game originally came out in like 2002, 2003. Um, and good lord, that game is huge. So it's a little clunkier than something like a Skyrim or Oblivion or even newer stuff like The Witcher 3. But there's something about Morrowind that you're never not finding out something new. Um, I remember the very first kind of Assassin's Guild quest that I got in Morrowind. I actually had to find the little town. They said it was a fishing village, but I had to find it. They said, oh, we kind of don't know where it is. It's somewhere uh, you know, in the Northwest. It took me 30 real minutes just to walk to that village to see if that was the right village. That type of you know, investment, the real deliberate action that you have to take as a player it, it defines you. It like it, it, it sinks in to your gaming soul and you want more of it. And not to knock, you know, the newer stuff like Skyrim and Witcher 3, but a lot of that stuff feels automated compared to how it felt in Morrowind. There's a sense of discovery for Morrowind that is unlike any other game, um, even the rest of the games on this list. I every time I do the Morrowind Game of the Year edition, I always find something new. It's like reading a good book. You always find the passage that you love. But then right next to it may be something that you see for the first time. And any good game is going to have that. But Morrowind has that in spades. And I urge you, please, 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 if you haven't played it, give it a chance. It is a little clunky. The battle system takes a little bit to get used to. But once you get in, you start getting in that loop of getting more gear and unlocking more story quests. Unbelievable. There's really nothing like it, man. Morrowind is mwah, beautiful. Thanks so much for hanging out for part one. Hope you like some of those games on the list. I'm thinking a few of them are kind of out of left field a little bit. Keep you on your toes. But hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. We still got four more videos to go. So definitely join me next time when we dig further and further and deeper into my top 25 games of all time. See you soon.